Welcome to Yorkshire Fun, I'm Leroy and welcome to the channel Hope You're All Good where we discuss everything from Mandela effects to the weird and wonderful of the internet. Thank you everybody that have subscribed already and support the channel, it really means a lot to me. Hope you're all good, hope you're all well. What have we got in for today? Well in today's video we are discussing, why well, I am, you're watching it, uh, is why are we so obsessed with serial killers? Yes. I'm going to try and balance it out so it's not all too dark. You know what I mean? We'll have a bit of dumb criminals at end to watch. Caught on camera. You know what I mean? Keep it real. Cue the music, let's go! <laughs> yes, we are obsessed with serial kills, but why? I mean, you only have to look at the, like, the top 50. Well, I mean, look at this list. I mean, is there ones that are jumping out at you? that you've watched. I mean, everything's about serial killers. There's documentaries, there's films, there's music influenced by it, art influenced by it. I mean, how many of these have you watched? If you've got more than 10, then you're a little bit obsessed, you know what I'm saying? It's like the quote. Where's that quote gone? Love this quote, and it's true. I can't watch a movie where a dog dies, but I will watch a serial killer documentary where 27 people are murdered to relax at night. How true is that? You know what I mean? I've noticed a lot of women are really into documentaries and it uh, always gets me a little bit worried. Some of the biggest TV programs that we watch. American Horror Story. Serial Killers galore in it. Look at Hotel. But, I mean, go back. Even uh, Twisty, the clown. I mean, look at him. He's based on John Wayne Gacy, who were a massive serial killer in the 80s. Killed 36 people. I mean, like, but to become a serial killer, the definition is you've got to kill three or more people in a space of a month and they all can't be connected. That's the definition of a serial killer. I want to talk to you about murderbilia. Murderbilia is collecting of memorabilia from serial killers. And, and it's not just in America. It's big. I mean, controversially, um, we, in 1995, we had a massive artwork um, done uh, by an artist uh, called Marcus Harvey. As you can see, this is Myra Hindley, one of the Moors murderers. Um, what made it more graphic was the, the famous mugshot of her uh, was actually made up of handprints of children to make the, which is obviously very controversial, talking piece. Is it murderbilia? No. But John Wayne Gacy's Pogo the Clown, which he which he painted, it like fetched twelve thousand dollars. I mean, so would you buy this? I mean, there is so many websites, so many, and we're obs we must be obsessed with serial killers because the amount of books of you type in serial killer books into Google, forty seven million searches. Patricia Cornwall, one uh, very famous American crime writer, she spent $5 million on getting made a billier from Jack the Ripper. Jack the Ripper, like number one serial killer, everybody knows Jack the Ripper, trying to get DNA evidence from letters, etc., so that she could prove who Jack the Ripper was. And that's who she thinks it is. So, Medibilia is a big business. I mean, I'm sure if I look, show you these photos, you'll be able to pinpoint who they are straight away. I mean, some of the art that they do, some of it's terrible, but there's a market out there in America, in the UK. So dark crimes, dark crime collectibles is the UK one, and there's so many. There's murder auction, true crime auction in America. You can buy mystery boxes. Yes, mystery boxes. There's I've seen YouTube videos of mystery boxes. People where you buy a mystery box, inside is serial killer letters or photographs or pubic hair or used knickers from serial killers. Murder Billy was coined by an American, uh, I think it was a police chief. I'll put the description underneath. And that's where it comes from, Murder Billy. Um, and you can't help thinking, is this why we're so obsessed with serial killers? I mean, look at the, right, look at the list. Yeah, I mean, you can buy dolls by serial killers. You know what I mean? I've got bobbleheads 
of places I've travelled, but dolls with actual serial killers. But I mean, look at the look at like the top ten items, right? Top ten most valuable murder billiard items. So you've got <coughs> Lee Harvey Oswald, Gold Wedding Bang, John Gil Dillinger's Pistol, Al Capone, which technically is, would it be classed as a serial killer? He's obviously a mobster, probably the well-known mobster. But then you start getting to like Jeffrey Dahmer. Look at these prices. $15,000 for Jeffrey Dahmer's signed paycheck. Charles, a lock of Charles Manson's hair, $800. Well, I mean, it's everywhere. I mean, you see T-shirts, you see dolls. And it, it's just all over. And it, especially when you look at some... I mean, Fred West's shovel. I mean, really? Would you buy... I think in in the UK, personally, I think that Murderbilia is very, like, underground. But in America, you seem to really be into it in the sense of like you don't mind doing documentaries about it youtube videos about what you've got and don't get me wrong i'm very intrigued i mean i made this youtube video about why are we obsessed with serial killers and i think it's it's not knowing it's the unknown because we're not in that mindset it's kind of like you want to protect yourself and sign stuff out for people that might be like potential serial killers i mean it's fascinating i mean some of the best films based on serial killers and and it's just how the mind works I mean I'm, I saw a documentary about the release a load of serial killers who've done artwork and everybody said oh they reformed, they reformed, they reformed and literally I think out of ten of them, six of them went on to kill again so pfft. so I mean that is one of the big questions is would you buy a Charles Manson t-shirt or because you're so disattached from it here in the UK, like it's America, obviously Once Upon a Time in America, a massive film by Tarantino, people wear t-shirts, based on roughly based on the Charles Manson killings, his cult, not him himself, um, but I don't think you'd see anybody in the UK wearing a James Bulger t-shirt, um, or Fred West, I'd be very surprised. I, I don't know. What what are your thoughts? Tell me in the comments. Would you buy a piece of memorabilia? And if so, would it be clothing or would it be something actually connected to the serial killer? If you've liked the video so far, please give me a like and a subscription. It really helps the algorithm. Much appreciated. So we're going to brighten the mood a little bit and look at some dumb criminals caught on camera. Oh yeah. Let's have a look. Let's see what this has to offer then. As we all know, Top it's 10. essential when stealing an ATM sure that you take your chain in your pickup truck. So when a guy from Queensland, Australia decided to do just that, he had all the necessary equipment. Like any good citizen, he tied his chain to the rear of his stolen truck and made his merry way to innocently rob the ATM from a gas. He turned up at the store, smashed his way through the glass door with the help of his trusty hammer, and made his way inside. He tied his chain to the ATM and then it was simply time to count his earnings. <laughs> What an idiot. What the man didn't realize was that his chain had come unhooked and his vehicle wasn't connected to the machine. As a result, He's he really drove away without any CCTV earnings. CCTV into a car, has it? A few minutes later, he logically returned to the scene of the crime in a bold attempt to try again. It was then that he realized his chain was too short, so he left the scene without a cent, cashless, I'm chainless, as and well. profitless. After completing a successful bank robbery, it's of course imperative to brag about your success on YouTube. When 19-year-old Nebraskan Hannah Sabata stole a car, held up a bank at gunpoint, and made her getaway with $6,000, she decided to advertise her feat in a bizarre online video. But it wasn't enough to be pragmatic about it, so, inspired by the creative hijinks of songsmith Bob Dylan, she did so wordlessly, artfully holding up handwritten signs in front of the camera. These signs spelled out the details of her crime, her feelings, and her intentions of how to spend the money. The video also sees her fanning herself with a wad of cash, pretending to smoke a cigar, and holding up the keys to the stolen vehicle. 
In the footage, she describes the robbery as the best day of her life. Put down your likes and subscribe she got from that video alone. Strangely, despite her dedication to remaining clandestine, the police somehow managed to discover the perpetrator of the crime, and she was swiftly arrested and charged. Hannah Sabata will spend between 10 and 20 years behind bars. The uber unfortunate. Cabs are useful for two things, a quick ride to another place and a handy holdup to earn some extra cash. One charmless man decided to climb into the back of a cab, gun in hand, and demand that the driver hand over all his money. Oh! Give me all your money, man. Man, I don't have... Give me everything you got. Give me that. Now! I need it now. I can make this the easy way, or we can make this the hard way, man. Give me everything I got, man. Keep your hand where I can see him. I just started. What else you got? I just started. Give me your wallet. Unfortunately for the gunman, the cab driver had just started his day at work and was in possession of a measly $11. Not quite the jackpot scoop he was probably expecting. It'll be it's a guy, it's the actual Uber driver, I feel sorry. He's going to be traumatized for life now. It's that idiot. Buy you a coffee or two, but it's not quite enough to retire to the Bahamas like a gang lord kingpin. During the robbery, CCTV footage overhears the gunman tell the driver to hand the cash over if you don't want to die. A few seconds later, he then tells him, I'm not going to hurt you. Talk about mixed messages. The easy way, man. Let me see your wallet and let me see your phone. Uh -oh. I need it all right now if you don't want to die, man. Okay, I have anything in my wallet. I'm not going to hurt you. Just give me everything I, you got. I'm sorry, I don't have anything in my wallet. The crook's luck soon goes from bad to worse. As it turns out, the vehicle behind the cab is a cop car. The cop casually walks up to the cab and nonchalantly arrests the criminal. Oh, I'll look you, Ray. Okay, poor man. Eighteen-year-old Victor Martinez Herrera faces up to ten years in prison. When looking for a low-cost alternative to an expensive disguise, there are a few options. Stockings, balaclavas, a newly grown beard, the list goes on. But two dopey robbers in Iowa, after deciding to get drunk and rob a house, had a different plan. In order to disguise themselves, they daubed their faces with permanent marker. Yep, permanent marker. Matthew McNally and Joey Miller still <laughs> a bunch of lines and squiggles all over their foolish faces. One of them drew a beard and a mustache, while the other wisely opted for something apparently resembling a superhero mask. It is alleged <laughs> that they chose their victim because one of the men believed that his girlfriend may have been having an affair with the homeowner. Police were called to the scene after someone reported that men with painted faces were about to rob a house. The yeah, I've got two absolute fucking idiots out here. <laughs> The officers stopped the car at gunpoint and discovered them in the vehicle with the bizarre and unusual drawings on their faces and later joked about them having the worst disguise ever. The pair were charged with second-degree burglary. To smash a car window, you need something hard, something durable, something sturdy. One Irish criminal and drug addict decided he fancied helping himself to a brand spanking new Mercedes, and step one in his well-crafted plan was to find an object and chuck it through the window of the car. So he did all the right things. He found a car, he put up his hood, and he found a brick, the perfect tool for smashing in a window. CCTV footage then shows him approaching the car and getting ready to unleash the fury. He throws the brick, his mind awash with images of wealth, happiness, and success. In just a few seconds, he'll be cruising along in his new steed, picking up chicks, making men jealous, and leaving a trail of smoke in his wake. Unluckily for him, things don't go as anticipated. The brick rebounds off the car window, hits him in the head, and knocks him out cold. The footage shows him dropping to the ground and remaining Ow, there until right. discovered by the landlord of a nearby pub, who initially nah, suspected nah, him to be the unfortunate victim of a hit-and-run attack. 
At first, the criminal claimed that he was beaten up and left for dead, but when the landlord noticed dents in the bodywork of what turned out to be his car, it didn't take a genius for the truth to unfold. Maybe next time, he'll try using a sponge. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to leave a rating and subscribe to see more videos like this. So there have been some videos from the dumbest criminals caught on camera. Someone's made me really chuckle, the one with faces. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Don't forget, a new video is every Monday. So hit the bell icon so you don't miss it. Thank you for watching. I've been Leroy. Thank you very much. Bye.